is coming into your district, um, you want to make sure that your job calendars and pay groups are set up for this employee. So maybe it's a whole new job um, and they're going to be on their own job calendar or pay group. Um, that's one thing they want to do first is make sure that this employee has that set up. Um, a lot of you probably already have these um, already set up for the jobs if a new employee comes in because they're probably being a replace um, for maybe a retired employee. So they're probably already out there. But just in case, um, that's just one thing we put in here to make sure if this is a completely new job, they wanna make sure that this job is set up and that pay group is set up prior. And then the next thing we're going to go on, kind of go through is uh, position templates and payroll um, item templates. If your districts aren't aware of this, um, I'm gonna kind of show you some different ways that um, can make it faster for districts when they're adding um, new employees. Um, especially the bigger districts that maybe have 100 new employees come in each year or something, um, this can save a lot of time for them. So we'll be going through that option, those options too. Okay, so the first thing that we are going to go through on our checklist here is I added this just uh, yesterday. Um, there's four different ways that um, districts can add new employees now. And I set them all here. So the, the first one was the core employee, which was the very first one in redesign, kind of, um, it was the lengthy one where you had to go through each of your steps under core, add the employee, and then go ahead and add each one and, and select each one at that time. That is still an option for them to do if you're not a big district and they're used to doing it that way, um, they can still um, utilize that by adding a, a new employee that way. Um, the other one we're going to be going through is the employee dashboard, which is um, a lot quicker. And that's up here under the employee dashboard when after um, you have to still add it under employee to get that name to show over here, though. So I do have that in the instructions that to utilize the employee dashboard, you still have to add it under the core first. The third one that we're going to go through is the mass loading and um, utilizing the new higher employee um, templates that we have out there. And I'll go ahead and show where those are. And then the last one is the workflows, which I think a lot of districts are starting to utilize because this is probably the quickest way to add new employees. Um, and they and it's all the steps are there and they don't can't shouldn't and shouldn't miss anything. Um, so that and we have the instructions here too. So I'm kind of going to go through each one a little bit. Um, and just to show um, different ways you can do that. I'm not gonna go through and eat and add an employee for each one. Um, I just wanted to show um, the steps of where you can go for each of adding the new employee. So again, like I said, we have our um, begin here, which um, for all of them is always, you have to add the employee portion first. And I went ahead and updated these a little bit. Um, they're a little outdated. Um, because there are some ones that are required now under the employee. Um, like this other email address. Now, if you have a SERS employee, um, this is now required for SERS new hire. So they want to make sure they always have an other email address if it's a SERS employee and also the home phone number. Um, this is another one that the SERS um, new hire report is using now. Um, so they want to make sure they have those filled out. Um, the other thing to remember is if they're utilizing the auto assign, which they can set that up under the configuration um, for the districts, and then the ID number will be automatic, automatically populated. Okay, so I do have one that I have out there. Bobby Brown. Spell. And I added this employee. Um, of, like I said, you have to go through and create your employee first. Now, um, like I said before, we have three different templates that you can use. Um, one is the employee, the position, and payroll items. Now, the employee is probably one that they may not use very often to set up for an employee. Um, so, big districts that have, um, like I said, hundreds of people maybe being hired a year or something. Um, 
and they can use, utilize these templates and save a lot of time. They can have everything set up. So maybe they have one set up just for part-time. And I believe I did that, yes. I had one for part-time. I already created one for part-time. And all that is, is I went ahead and start check marking things that a part-time employee might um, have. Now you need to leave just the specifics employee stuff off because that you will add once you click the template and bring this up. But like you can see the part-time report to MIS, I have all my necessary flags that might be for any employee that's coming in that's part-time. It just saves time and you don't miss missing, you don't miss um, checking anything at that time. So if you wanna create one maybe for full-time, you can also do that. So I will just do an example. So I'm gonna unclick the part-time, um, but I have everything else set up that I may uh, wanna do. And again, you can do one for single employees that come in, you can make a template for that. You can do one for um, married um, employees. Again, this one probably isn't utilized as much as the position one, but it, the option is out there. So like I said, this is, I am on check the part-time. I have everything else um, on. I don't have anything else fit, um, on here because it's just a generic one to pull people in and I save the template. And it's gonna ask you, what do you wanna call it this time? I'm just gonna call it full-time. So now when I exit out and I come back in to create an employee, I do have that option under here. So now I know, okay, I have a full-time employee. I can go ahead and start. The necessary flags are already marked for me. I don't have to worry about those. Might be a full-time single employee. You can do a full-time married employee. Um, again, up to the districts, how detailed they wanna get into these templates, but the option is there. Okay. All right. The next thing, um, after you enter the new, or the employee, um, you want to go ahead and say that. So now here is where you can start going into the dashboard for the employee dashboard, or you can continue on adding under the core. Once you got the employee's name in, now you can go over to the employee dashboard and start adding. So I had already added Bobby Brown over here under the core employee. So now he is shows with blank, everything is um, a blank slate. And now I can start adding all his um, positions, compensations, pay distributions, his payroll items and payroll accounts. And again, we have this here detailed out on our adding of the employee. So the first one on your position would be um, as adding the position. And this is where the districts can utilize these templates that we have that you um, can create for each district or for each um, certain position. Um, here's an example that I created one for dance club. So what all I did, you don't wanna enter position number. All you wanna do is enter the information that is specific to this club. So you would enter in any information, leaving out specific information like the hire date, start date, because each employee may come in um, for the dance club position at different times. But you can start that, um, set that up. So I went ahead and just added like it was an active. I added the position description. I added the building and what pay group the dance club is coming from. It's a classified um, appointment type. It's a SIRS. Um, again, if you have a supervisor, that's something that can be added. And if that's something that comes later and you forget, you can actually save that to that template if you need to. Um, so again, they can utilize and then um, click on any eligible flags for this um, position that will be same for everybody. And I have an example here I got off one big district. And this is what they had. Um, they have several. Now, again, you can choose and create templates and name them anything you want, but this district um, utilized and use um, maybe specific jobs were for different positions. So they just created them and use, um, named them what those jobs were. 
So you, um, I just wanted to show that you can get very detailed in your templates in saving time when new positions and employees come in. The next thing I wanted to show is once you have your position, then you would need to add your compensation. And that would just follow right down into your next um, step in the line here on the employee dashboard. Um, there is no um, templates for compensations, so they don't, um, you don't have that um, utilized for that. Um, I did an, um, enter some different stuff in here just for a reminder to the districts that um, like the calendar start date, um, again, this is used for like the OGS reporting, EMIS reporting. So it's important that they make sure they have that calendar start date in there. And then also um, for when they calculate um, the ODGF, EMIS and service credit, um, they make sure they put a calendar stop date in there. So just a reminder on a few things, I put a little hints out there to make sure they remember that. And then they want to follow down into the next, which would be your payroll accounts for each, for each position that you have, you would need a payroll account. And then the next one would be your payroll items. And then again, this is another one that they can use to create templates if they want to. So they might have, um, If they want to set up a template for this, they can do that also. And I already have one set up there for default. And it just enters, has everything ready to go. And then all you have to do is just add your specific stuff for this, for this employee. Because everybody might be different on their filing status or um, such things like that. Um, again, you can check, um, create one that is just for use of the new W-4, which now everybody coming in uh, is going to be that. Um, so again, they can utilize those templates. I have another example for payroll from a bigger district that I found that they created different payroll items. So maybe they have 50 people from different city tax if you're a big um, district and they can create one and they, maybe each percentage is different. So they can go ahead and create that, get those all set up. And all they do is um, go to the template, click on that, um, select that city that this employee is from, and, um, and then that all gets filled in and they can save it. They don't have to worry about trying to make sure they fill in each spot that is um, required for maybe that city. So again, um, if they wanna utilize that template, Again, that's up to the district. And I do have a couple here already. And as you see, it just filled in my percentage and I'm good and I can go ahead and save that right away. I don't have to worry about trying to um, sit, uh, taking the time to fill in those spots. Um, once you do that, then you have to create your leaves, which is your next step here. And this is your um, you leaves accumulation for the employee. Now that this would only show if the employee was eligible on that position, will these show? And you want to go ahead in and add your sick, your personal, personnel, personnel, excuse me, and vacation. So once you have that created, the one other thing that you have to do, and you actually have to leave the employee dashboard is go over to core and go to leaves and under accumulations. So now you have to add the accumulation for that employee for their um, personal sick and, and um, vacation. We do have that here. And the next step after you create it, the leaves accumulation. And then once you add that, you want to make sure you go back to the leaves for that employee and make sure that balance updated. So they do have a balance showing that um, that amount is there for the accumulation.
And then the last two, um, the last thing would be your paid distributions. And that is just your direct deposit that you would have to um, set up for your employer. Most, I would say probably most are now all direct deposits, but some may not be. So again, they have that option to um, create either check or direct deposit, either or. And we did the payroll items. I kind of skipped through that one. But um, the one thing on the payroll items, just to remember when they're creating, um, if they're selecting by position number, if the employee has um, maybe um, job one is pick up on pick up, but job two isn't, um, they're going to want to make sure they remember that they have to set up either um, all payroll items have to have that position set up. So you have to have like a 400 and a 590 with position one if it's like a pickup on pickup job. It cannot be missing um, a job number. So it has to match um, either no job number, all 400, 591, or a job one, 400, or a um, 590. Same thing goes for STRS. So just to remember that, so they don't miss that. So the other thing, and then uh, this is the end of the adding of um, the your employee. So now the employee should be set up and ready for their first payroll. So that was the one, um, the employee dashboard option that they can utilize for setting up new employees. So the third one, um, I know maybe like, the bigger districts use maybe mass load for everything to load in anything, um, the, the templates that we have out there. And these are located, if you go to the help, the public shared reports, and then the public share report library. And then you can go to I started recording. Oh, yeah, I did. Okay. And then the next thing you need to do is um, the new hire employee templates. So here is the new hire employee templates that districts can utilize for setting up new employees. We have one for each of the steps that are on adding of our employees. So you have your employee, your position, if it's a new contract or a non contract, if for leaves, pay distribution, payroll items, and pay account. And all they have to do is click on this and download it, and then they can utilize this template to add in the new employees. So here's an example of the template for employee. Again, you have to remove this the test, but it just shows um, kind of what you need to do to what needs to be filled in. And then they can add in other information on the spreadsheet if they need to. Right now it's an Excel, they can go ahead and say that as a CSV. And once they do that, then they can go to the mass load. And then choose the file and choose employee. So what they would need to do then for each um, template or excuse me, for each spreadsheet they create, they would have choose that file, then choose that certain, if it's a leaves, the position, payroll distribution, payroll item, and load that into, um, which would show up in the employee dashboard and also show over here under core then. So using, utilizing the mass load, they can um, create the spreadsheets for everything. They don't have to actually create the employee under um, the core first, like we have to do the first two that we did. Um, they can create everything directly from these spreadsheets and load them in using mass load. Okay. So one other thing I wanted to show under, the, under here is once they do add these employees in, um, 
the EMIS related reports is another option they can utilize is to make sure if these new employees are um, reported to EMIS, they can utilize these spread um, reports here and click these .json files and select these and um, pull these into your report manager and then pull these employees out. And they can double check to make sure they're not missing any fields that might be related that need to be um, um, inputted for EMIS reporting. So that way they don't have problems when they do, um, when they do um, have their EMIS at fiscal year end um, that nothing is missing when they submit it. So this one is for the employee portion, the position, the contract compensation and the non-contract, which is um, things that do get um, sent in for them. So here's an example of that EMIS report. Maybe, there we go. And here's just an example of what information once you um, put that into your report manager, the .json file. And then once you pull that information out, um, it will show all the employees that are reported as true to EMIS. And they can verify that they have all that information filled in correctly before they move on. And they forget that they don't have that information. And then when they submit it to the staff collector and they um, see they have missing data, um, this can be just a second catch for them to make sure they do have all that information in. And again, they can do that for all those necessary um, fields, the position in the employee. So this just is the example of the report, then this would be the .json file that they would need to pull in. I'll go here and show you under report manager, import, and then employee EMIS. So now they can um, use this file and then, like I said, pull in those, um, pull in all the employees, just to make sure they have all that information in there. Okay. So the next thing to use would be, I think what most districts are now using is the employee or the workflows. Um, this will take a couple steps to get set up, but once the district is set up, then they don't need to, you know, do all these steps. But I wanted to put it out here for you at the ITC. Um, if there's something that your districts want to start using, um, we have all this information out here on how to get this, um, your district set up and then the employees set up to use it. So the next thing I, um, first thing would be is, the setup instructions. So I have them here and they're actually have them in our documentation, which is down below here and it says workflows. So to get these two set up, the first thing you at the ITC would need to do is the installation. And we have a um, installation works, uh, workflow installation guide here. Um, and this is how to get the districts set up and ready to go um, to utilize this. So once they follow this, and if you like, again, if you have problems, um, you probably would need to open a ticket and we would um, get you to um, the developers or somebody that can help you if you're having trouble getting your district set up for the workflows in the employee dashboard. Okay, so once that is set up and ready to go, um, then when you go to system, workflows, this will show now here. So this should be all set up. Once you have that all set up and is correct, they should they will find see this under system and workflows. And then this information should all be filled in and ready to go. Once I have once you have that um, installation done. So that would be your first step to check to make sure everything is um, good. Okay. So then the second thing to actually get the workflows admin tab, which is right here, is not missing right now. 
So the first thing we need to do is to get that to show. And here in our documentation, we have that um, showing what you need to do to get that module turned on. So what you need to do first is go to the system modules. And down here, workflows module needs to be turned on. And then now my workflow shows. So once you turn that on, now when you go to system configuration, you're gonna see your workflows configuration also show. So now I wanna turn on my employee onboarding and save and refresh. And now that shows. Now, because I'm an admin, I automatically will see workflows no matter what. Um, but if you have employees out there that have to have that added, I do have one that I did add um, a role for. So I had a personnel user that I wanted to add a workflow to so they can do this process. And again, you can add this to any of your Employ, uh, they can add this to any of their employees if they add employees in. And what I did was create, I just called it workflow. And I granted positions of what the role, what role they would need to actually enter um, and use the employee onboarding. And what they actually need is the workflows admin in order for them to actually see that workflows tab. And then to, to use, utilize the employee onboarding, they need USB standard to all these um, different, um, which is pretty much the same from our checklist, is the compensation employee leaves, payroll distributions, payroll accounts, payroll items, and position. And then once that is set up, then you can add this to your, any user that um, is going to be adding employees, and I added it, I created a PL user, and I went ahead and edited it and just pulled that over and pulled over to workflows. So now my personnel user can utilize the workflows on the employee dashboard. Okay. So if I log out, go in as that person, Now you see that I have employee onboarding and workflows is available. So now this employee um, can start adding new employees in. So I did start one, but if they wanted to start a whole new one, you do the start onboard process. And again, if the district utilizes your um, they have that set up and under consistent configurations, they assign employee number automatically. They can go ahead and click that and automatically select enters a number for them. So now they can start putting these in. And let's see, we'll just do Miller, Dana Miller. So now I have my on employee onboarding starting. So once they click on the I again, now they can go ahead and start entering all those um, options all the way down. And again, the templates that they created prior, maybe already under core, um, will show on each of the employee, the position, and the payroll items. So those transfer over that you already created um, show up under um, the employee, uh, excuse me, the em employee onboarding. So again, they can utilize that if they need to.
Um, I don't have one that goes all the way through the review, which I should have done. Sorry about that. But I did add um, in, in case you have questions of what um, permissions they needed on the role, I did add that in documentation here that what they needed. And another thing they can also utilize in here is using of the date shortcuts if they need to. Might save a little bit of time on them. Um, the one thing at the end, once you get everything entered um, and once you have all these completed, you would need to do a review at the very end to complete the task. And all the review shows is um, you can go through each of these because you have to review it and complete the whole task then. Because once you enter each one in, you're not done yet. You still have to do the review and make sure you can verify to make sure all your information is correct first before you complete the task. Because once you complete the task, then that employee will show up under employee dashboard and will show up over here under the main, you know, employee core and positions and such. Until that review is complete, you cannot, um, it won't show anywhere under core or employee dashboard yet. So that's just a reminder that they need to do um, that final review at the end. Um, one other thing I wanted to show is on the employee dashboard, um, excuse me, workflow is if a user um, starts it, they will be assigned to it. So another user can't go in and start like um, in the middle and start trying to complete it. Um, the only way they can do that is they have to go over here to the X and unassign it. So now if you have another employee um, maybe this play went on vacation and they need to get this, um, the, the employee onboarding finished for this employee. Now they can do that because it's not assigned to anybody. So once that uh, second employee starts entering the information, then they're going to be assigned, um, be assigned to it then. So they do have the option to unassign people that may have started it, but couldn't complete it for some reason. And then the other employee can start um, the completion of it and get it in the review process and um, get those employees over into the system so they can start, um, maybe a payroll needs to be started. Okay. Okay. Um, is there any questions on the different ways to add an employee? Again, this would be located under your general procedures. Um, just kind of wanted to let the, if you didn't, wasn't aware of all the different ways they can add them and which ways are the quickest. Um, so, all right. As of now, I think that's all we have. Um, if there isn't any questions on um, different ways to add um, employees into the system. I think our next fiscal with Fridays will be, I have to look actually, let's see. And that would be next Friday, but that would be for the USAS common errors um, at nine o'clock. Uh, if anybody wants to join that one. And then on uh, August 4th, we have the fiscal with Friday's um, July release cap at 9 a.m. So those are the next two that are coming up for the fiscal with Fridays. Okay, we have a question here. Um, if an employee is given the workflows, could they be limited? Um, are you stating um, only adding certain portions? Okay, only adding. Um, and not seeing on dashboard. 
making changes. Okay. So you just want them to see um, adding under here, but not having them see anything under here. It probably depends what, um, what role they have. I would have to look at that and see if they don't have did like a personnel employee. Okay, so exactly the one that I have that I have set up for um, my test account because that's a personnel employee. Is that kind of what you were asking? Okay. Okay. Yeah, they're still going to see that employee because personnel user um, actually sees the employee leaves and such. And they also will see, oh, come on. And they're also gonna see under employee dashboard because you they are, they have um, under core, they're still at, actually able to see that employee. I'm not sure if that answers your question. But as far as I can see for a personnel employee, um, they can still they can see all those options and still see them under employee dashboard. Because if they're entering the employee, um, but I will I will double check to see if there, I do believe there might be, let me see here. Is, are you questioning maybe just give them workflow access? Gotcha. Okay. So I will have to double check to make sure to see if there is, um, I know they have to have just an order, they have to have the USB standard um, that is apparent. And then anything to see like um, the workflows, they have to have these um, workflow admin and then all these options under here. So I believe if you give them these options, this is going to give them options to the core and the employee dashboard to see those. But I can double check and I can let you know, and make sure I'm not missing somebody and I would make your name down. Okay. Okay. Good question on that. Any other questions on that? Okay, so you just want them to add under the um, onboarding and that's it. So they're just employees that just do the employee onboarding. Okay, perfect. Okay. All right, I will get that and I will let you know on that. Any other questions on the adding of the employee? You're welcome. Okay. Um, again, I appreciate you joining us today on this Friday. I hope everybody has a great weekend. Hopefully this rain stays away. And we will see you the next Fridays with Fisco then. Thanks everyone. Have a good day.